You've got an exclusive preview on some of the stuff that's happening. A thing called Lazarus, which was the sequel to Life on Mars that was never made. Oh, so, yes. um, uh, so I remember Life on Mars, brilliant, and all the rest of it. So, um, and Dick said to me, he said, "Oh, we've got permission from the writers to do a reading of Lazarus." I thought it was brilliant, and oh, he said, "We've we've put it online. It sold out." He said, "It sold out within hours because the fans of Life on Mars, but they didn't say who was going to be in the cast for the reading." And they didn't tell me either because I, I I didn't know what was happening. So Dick said, oh, he said, I want you to be in Lazarus. Um, will you will you do it? I said, sure. Yeah. But quite, I, what a privilege. So um, he sent me the script and I read it. And it, to, as far as the screenplay is concerned, it was just brilliant. It, you know, it gave you a real tone. It was about tone of the what, what story. Was it? Was it still in the 70s? Oh. It was is that that's the what happened. The two writers basically were sent on a weekend with five hundred quid in cash to Blackpool, and, and they said, "Can you come up with a story?" And they said, "All we want to do is write the Sweeney. That's all we want to do." And they said, "Well, the only way to do it to write the Sweeney is a time travel story." So that's why it became a time travel story, right? And um, uh, and the you know the character I think Philip Glenister played became the sort of you know the, the the sort of politically incorrect hero yes. of the whole yes. thing, um, and I thought he was going to be there, and I thought John Sims was going to be there because I thought you know they've not put it on the listing, but I'm I, you know I'm going to be working with John Sims and Philip Lenz. So, um, and I read the script, very good. I I thought, oh great, I'm going to be playing the lawyer and the pathologist. That's what I'm going to be playing, lawyer pathologist. Um, great. So I turned up. The two writers are there, and Dick Fiddy said, oh, and Steve, we want you to play Gene Hunt. Oh, wow. I said, fuck. I really <laughs> yeah. And the two writers sat there, right, okay. And and, and then, then my the sort of northern background came up, and um, I knew those characters. I worked on the clubs. I knew the Gene Hunts of this world. Big, mm. brassy, bollocksy-faced people. And... Um, and it was my proudest moment last year was when we did it in front of an audience. And Gene Hunt didn't appear till about halfway through the script. And uh, I'd already played the pathologist or the lawyer or whatever it is I'd played. So they didn't know who was going to be, you know, Gene Hunt. And then, but I loved the, the writing. And that inspired yeah. me to write my screenplay, not as a screenplay in a traditional sense, but, but just capture the tone and essence of what it, and that was what was so impressive about the, the writing. Yeah, that, that sounds really interesting, particularly because there's like a through line from, like you say, the Sweeney and John Thor, and it's all taken in by Philip Glenister, and then it, it makes its way to you. <laughs> well, 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 here's the thing. I, I, I sort of realized um, that uh, what Philip was doing, and he got it absolutely perfect, uh, slight awareness that you're playing a character. Um, and it's about playing a character and keep, but keep, mm. he kept it real. But at the same time, you could knew that, uh, that, that he knew what was going on, that he knew he was. And the two writers yes. said, it's not really, um, a, 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 it's not really about a, a, a crime. It's not really about, um, uh, the, 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 the policeman. It's a, it's about, television itself it's about yes. those programs yes. from the 70s and how they are so different and um he got that brilliantly you know uh and there's a, that slight self-awareness that i then put in i i also know how to play the crowd so i played the crowd and i sort of semi-learned it which allowed me to you know speak directly yeah. to the crowd and it was my proudest moment. I got a round of applause after the monologue. It's a brilliant, brilliant monologue <laughs> that Gene Hunt has, and um, uh, and and I, I, that was my biggest thrill. Was that is amazing? What a story! Playing, and playing Gene Hunt. Yeah, because I'd imagine. Yeah, that that is so cool. It because it, it ties in so many eras, and like you say, there's a knowing element to it. Of you know that I, it's almost like a tip of the cap 
the way he plays it to to, oh, it to John absolutely. Farr. And and here's uh, the and, irony. Uh, Sorry, th- th- then no, I no. met a friend of mine uh, who knows him. He said I played no. golf with him yesterday, oh. and um, and he knew about it. And uh, he said, "But why didn't they ask me? I'd have done it." And the BFI <laughs> too late. <laughs> the BFI did ask him, but the agent can't have sent it on. You know, oh, right? So, oh, um, so then the oh, friend funny. took a picture of me and said, "This is this is your rival." <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, oh, that's no, it, so amazing. It was, a, it was a, 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 and that inspired me to to write it as a to write it as a screenplay because what I loved about Lazarus was you got the sense of the tone of the whole thing and the comedy. And that was, so it, it, it they had written all that into the, it, it, into the uh, stage directions, if you will. Um, and I thought that's a really interesting way of writing a story. And, um, yeah, and they said they spent as much time writing the stage directions as the dialogue. Um, interesting. So interesting. It, anyway, okay. I, I don't think mine comes close, but that's the, the, I thought it was an interesting way to write a story. Well, no, that's a, that's a fantastic story. That's really interesting. Thank you. 